that we have turned off the option for attendees to use their microphones and webcams during a meeting, although we will probably you know, turn them on for this session since there's not a ton in here right now. But you can participate by using the Q&A feature to ask questions and chat feature for general comments anytime throughout the session. You can access the Q&A tool by clicking the Activities button in the bottom right corner of the screen. Also, feel free to use the hashtag Spark22 to share out about your learning today. That's the hashtag pound symbol with S-P-A-R-C-C-22. This session is being recorded and will be available for viewing again later on at the conference website. At this time, it is my pleasure to turn this over to our presenter for the session, Trevor Beck. Hi, guys. Welcome, and welcome to Google Chrome Unleash Your Power Browser. In the chat, I've put in a link to the resources, so if you want to click on that and have that handy, you can see what we're going to be going through. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am a uh, basically a Google Apps for Education certified trainer and innovator. I have worked at a university here in McEw or sorry, a university here in Canada, oh, for over 30 years, and uh, just recently retired, but still staying strong with the Google stuff. If you want to see more videos that I've done, youtubecom slash c slash Trevor Beck is the link that you can have there. It'll be in the the resource materials as well. I also have two presentations that I've recorded for this conference that are also available. So if you're interested, by all means, take a look at that. So um, before you get into the agenda, we basically we have turned off the um, we, sorry, we have turned on the ability for you guys to come off mute. So if you have a question or something, by all means, I like to treat this because it's a small group right at the moment. I treat it like a classroom setting. So in a classroom setting, you would just ask a question. So same thing here. If you've got a question, don't be afraid to come off mute and ask the question directly out loud. And uh, I can address it there. I also get tend to get excited about Google Chrome and, see, and my other presentations. So if I start to go a bit fast, please you know, feel free to say, whoa, Trevor, just uh, tone the excitement down. So let's talk about the agenda. So we're going to start off with looking at some of the browser settings. And I know a lot of people go, oh, this is so boring. But one of the most important things that we're going to look at is profiles. And if you're doing that switch account thing when you're in Google, like your Gmail, and you go to switch account to check your personal mail versus your work email, you are going to love profiles. Profiles basically is like having two separate browsers in there. So we'll take a look at that. Search is a big function of what we use Chrome for. And one of the things we're going to look at is the Omnibox. Now, that's the location bar at the top where we put in our search functions. You can put other search engines in there. So we'll talk about that because that'll save you a lot of time for research. And it's something that is very, very handy to be teaching your students as well. Tabs, I mean, everyone takes a look and go, well, what can I do with tabs? Well, there's a lot of cool tricks with tabs. So we will take a look at that. Just going to talk a bit about bookmarks, not so much how to organize them, but just to talk about, do you know that you can, uh, what you can bookmark? Because a lot of people don't realize that when you go to Google Drive and you go and navigate that folder five levels down, you can bookmark that. So you don't have to keep doing that navigation. We'll talk a little bit about Chrome extensions and some of the favorite ones that I have. And if we have time, I'm going to show you something about custom search engine, it's, which is not really tied with Google Chrome, but you can make use of it as, as a search engine. And it's a really cool tool. Okay. So, well, that's not it. That's not all, folks. <laughs> Let's bring my presentation up here. Uh, I normally would have two windows open up, or sorry, two browsers, but um, recently I'm down to one monitor. So I'm going to be referring back and forth to my document here. So my apologies if that throws you off a bit. So this is the link that I sent out in the chat. This is the document that we're going to be working with. Uh, as I'm going through, I'm on a Mac right now. So there is a link here for Chrome shortcut keys. So if you're on Windows or a Chromebook and uh, and I don't tell you what the, the controls are and stuff, this is where you can find that information for your device. Okay, so I want to start off with my top tips. Everyone probably knows about this. It's very common. I know Eric has talked about this a lot. But recently closed tabs, Control-Shift-T or C command shift T on a Mac. So if I have a, oh, this window open here, or this tab open here, and I accidentally close it for whatever reason, you don't have to freak out. If you just do Control Shift or Command Shift T, it'll open it back up. The beauty of it is if I close three of them in a row, well, let's do four of them, what the heck. So if I do four of them in a row and I use that same command, it will go back in time and open up all the tabs. So I could have 10 tabs there that I've closed. I can now open them all up. 
great handy little tool for you when you're working uh, with these things and you accidentally close stuff. Stop playing background videos. Oh, now I'm a guy that has multiple windows and multiple tabs. And I got this video running here right now. You can't see it. Uh, you probably can't hear it, but it's running. You can see it going on there. And if I have another window open, I'm just going to open another window for the heck of it. Let's use this one here. Open this in the window. I have no idea where this sound's coming from. And it's driving me up the wall. Well, what happens is, let me just uh, skip. There we go. The video going. So in the top right-hand corner here, there is this little uh, music controller. And when I click on this, it's going to show me all the videos that are open. And I can go in and quickly pause it. Beautiful for that. The other nice thing about it is anything that has a controller, so if it's music or YouTube or whatever like that, all those video controls will show up in here. If there's multiple ones, I can quickly jump to that video just by clicking on it. So you'll notice here I'm in this window at the front. If I click on this piece here, it jumps right to that tab, right to that video. So it's a really quick and handy way to get rid of uh, or stop all those videos that are playing um, or just jump to that video that's playing somewhere on your tab. Keep in mind that Google will, if you watch up in my uh, browser here up at the tabs, if I'm playing, I'm going to mute, whoops, I'm going to mute him here. But see, there's a little speaker icon. Well, that's great when you only have this many tabs. I usually have probably like 50 tabs open. So at this point, this thing is so small, you can't see it. So having this controller here to be able to go in here and, uh, and, and, and shut it down is great. Another cool thing about this, I'm actually just going to open up a bunch of videos here. So let me just open uh, these five videos. And I'm going to take a quick look. Come on. Oh, they're not playing. That's why. But there is this background music that I'm playing. So I've got it actually playing here. And we can see it here. Come on. No, it's not going to work for me now. Okay. But do you see where this pop-out is? This should be showing up here. But this pop-out is actually going to just take the video that's playing, throw it in the corner as a floating window. So if you've got music playing like I have here, I could just have it running in the back there, and it will float above all the other screens. Just to get it back into place, I just click on back to tab, and then it's back into my tab there. So that's that. Let me just, oh, hang on. I'll keep that open. I might need it for a second. Okay. Searching tabs. Oh, here's the other thing. Again, Trevor loves having his windows open. It's not uncommon for me to have 70 tabs open because I'm doing research and I keep coming back and forth and back and forth to stuff. And somewhere in this tab, I have this document that Eric Kurtz wrote for Control Alt. Was it, what's it called? Control Alt Achieve. So I want to get to that tab. I know it's in there somewhere. In the top right-hand corner, there's this drop-down arrow. And what it's going to do is it's going to show me all the open tabs and then all the recently closed tabs. Now, if I've got 75 tabs open up, I am not going to be scrolling through. So what I'm going to do instead is just use the search function. So I'm just going to type in control. Oops, control. There is the control. And when I click on it, it takes me to that tab wherever it is, whatever window it's in. So again, I'm a kind of guy that I open up a bunch of tabs. I'm going to get back to it at some point in time, or I'm using it for research and that. And then suddenly I go, oh, I need to, I, I just read that. Where was that? I use this thing on a daily basis, probably on an hourly basis to go back and forth between my information. Linking to text in a page. This is awesome. So, if I wanted to share this, this link out to, to you and I say, hey, you know, there's this information down in the page about halfway down here. It's called option two, multiple profiles for repeated use. I want you guys to learn about that. I would just send you the link and tell you to scroll for it. Well, instead, though, Google Chrome has gone in and said, you know what? If you highlight this piece of text and right click on it, you can copy a link that goes right to whatever text you've highlighted. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to go back to my second window here. And let me just close a couple tabs. Here. Uh, be quiet, Kevin. Uh, I'm just going to pull up that link there, and I'm going to paste it in. So here we can see that it has got the link of the page, and then it has this number sign and this, this thing here. But look at the text in there. So multiple profiles for repeated use. Well, that's the text we highlighted. When I actually go in and just visit that page, it takes the user right down to that section so that you can now take a look right there. So now when you're creating bookmarks, 
your bookmarks can actually go directly to that part of the page you want if you don't have the control of it. So for example, if you have a Google Doc, I could put in headings and stuff and I could create bookmarks to go there. This isn't my page, this is someone else's page. So I can just use this tool here. I can also copy and highlight you know, larger pieces of text. Um, I, I kind of recommend, you know, you don't want to do too much text if you can just like go to the section, but you know, you can do multiple paragraphs. So let's just visit that. And there we can see that it's gone and highlighted that text. So that's an awesome tool for, for doing research and sharing stuff with people. Last thing is installing the Google Chrome apps. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go to chat.google.com. So in chat.google.com, um, I've got this page here. It's a tab here. Quite often, again, I'm doing chats. I'll hear a beep or a bang, whatever the noise effect is that I've got uh, uh, set to it. But where is the chat? And then I end up using this tool here to find the chat. Well, there's a couple things I can do about do with it. I can pin it, which we'll talk about a little later. But if you notice, some of these have this little icon here pointing down. And this is called a progressive web app. Basically, what it's doing is it's going to say, I'm going to use Google Chrome and I'm going to pretend that this is its own app. It's going to have its own icon and everything. So just like, uh, let me just get this rid of this. So just like on my, my launcher here, I have an icon for Safari and Microsoft Teams and Chrome. I'm now going to have an, a, an icon for chat. So let's just go ahead and do this and we'll install that. And there it is. It's got its own brand, brand new window. Notice for me on my Mac up here, there's a menu item. It's got its own menu items and stuff. And down at the bottom there, there is Google Chat. So I now have this application. It's still a web app. It's still a web, uh, a web page, but it has its own interface. And the nice thing about it, it's using Chrome, but if I was just to click on that, it would not go and launch that profile. So I wouldn't have to open up all the different pages and stuff to get to it. It's just going to launch Google Chat. And quite often, that's all I want is Google Chat. I don't necessarily want to do surf on the web or anything. I just want that open up in the corner. So there are lots of different websites that are now creating these progressive apps. Um, if you're in the Microsoft shop, guess what? You can do Outlook and OneDrive and et cetera, et cetera, all those things. YouTube, if you go to YouTube, we'll pull that up here real quickly. I can see it there. I could also set that up as its own application. So... Keep an eye out as you're visiting pages, especially they're ones that you visit all the time. Progressive web apps are, are really handy for you. Okay, that is my top tips. <clears throat> any questions so far? Um, I don't see anything in the chat. Do we have anything in the Q&A there, Joey? I don't see anything in the Q&A. Okay, cool. All right. Quick water break. Okay. We talked about profiles at the very beginning. One of the things I want to talk about profiles gives you the ability to go in and, and create different accounts for your windows. So I'm just going to show you in the top right hand corner um, with Google. So right now I have, I'm logged into a web page with Google Chrome uh, or sorry, with my Google account. And a lot of times if I wanted to switch from here and go into Gmail or something like that, you would click on here and you might add another account and do that switching thing. The problem with doing the switching thing is you can only have one open at a time. So you're either in your personal Gmail account or in your work account or whatever. With profiles, it basically says, you know what? I'm going to have create a brand new browser and it's going to do its own thing. So in the top corner here, if you probably have an icon here if you're not logged in already. But if I click on here, I can go and add a user. So what happens is when I create a profile, it's going to sync all the bookmarks for that profile. It's going to sync all the add-ons and extensions and stuff for that profile for that you would use in the Chrome app. So when I look at my personal account and my work account, uh, actually, let me just give you an example. I'm going to pull up my dog Jazz here for a sec. So Jazz always helps me out with my training. Come on, where'd you go, Jazz? There she is. She's hiding here. Notice the bookmarks here. Totally different than the bookmarks here. With Jazz also, um, 
I can see it's it's her account. So there it is. It's jazz at Gmail. We saw the other one was mine. And my in my email is tied to jazz. And this email is tied to this account. So you get to have the beauty of all that. And the other thing, too, to make it really easy is I've got different colors. So this orange color here I know is jazz. The green color that I have running here is my training account. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm just going to walk you through. Uh, I'm going to grab some text here. And if I go too fast, I mean, uh, th this is going to be recorded afterwards. By all means, go through the recording, you know, use the pause. You can use the speed and slow me down if it's going too fast for you. Uh, let's go up into here. Whoops, not up there, up into Chrome. And I'm going to go add a new person. So I'm going to go down to here to add. So sign into that Google account. So I'm going to do that now. So there's my email address for my training account. You could use your personal Gmail account if you wanted to. Going to do the rest of the steps. Now watch what happens here. Uh, whoops. Uh, first of all, I get a warning saying, hey, this is account is managed by this training center. So if you were to log in with a work account or something like that, you or your school account, you would probably get a notice, something like that. But watch what happens. Do you want to do syncing? Syncing means that all your preferences and stuff that, like that that you use for Chrome, do you want those in the cloud? So if you log in somewhere else on a different computer, so like, <clears throat> excuse me, like a Chromebook, do you want everything syncing up and down? And I'm going to say, yes, I am. So watch what happens. It opens a brand new window out. Um, we're loading up some different bookmarks in here. I'm loading up some extensions or add-ons are, are thrown in here. And of course, this I've logged in as Clark Kent. So guess what? This is Superman's page. And we can see that that is, in fact, who we logged in. And when I go and take a look here, I'm logged in with Clark Kent. So that's one of the great things about having these profiles is you can have as many as you want. And you can see on my list here, uh, well, come back up here. I've got a number of them here. Uh, in one of my other uh, computers, I actually probably have almost another third of that with different accounts. And the beauty of that is now I can test, because I do a lot of testing, I can test with a student account, a staff account, um, a, a personal Gmail account, a, another test Gmail account, a, a training account. I can go and test the sharing and all that kind of stuff directly within the things. And I'm just moving back and forth. I can also switch back and forth just by going and finding the one that I want, clicking on it and moving back and forth that way. I personally kind of like the ability to have different colors so that I can go in and just find that window and click in there. Both the Mac and the Windows has a kind of a desktop view where all this, um, I don't know if I got it set up on this machine. I apparently do not. But it, it will kind of take all the windows into smaller windows. And then you can see by the color what, the, uh, what account that is and jump over to that window. So that's profiles. Profiles is such an awesome, awesome tool. The other beauty about it is that it will sync to your mobile device. And on my mobile device on Chrome, I can be looking at, again, either my work account or my, uh, my, my, my training account here. On, and all the bookmarks and stuff are going to switch back and forth on there as well. So really, really handy when you have to log in with multiple and you don't want to do that switch stuff because that is kind of a pain. Okay, I'm looking at the chat, it's the chat. So if you guys do have any questions, I mean, that's the best place for me to see them anyways, is in the chat. Uh, let's talk, oh, and again, the other thing I talked about is assigning different themes for your different accounts. Just makes your life a little bit easier. This, this link here is a video that demonstrates it a little bit deeper. If you wanna go and take a look at that, it's a great resource. I've been using it for years. I send it to people all the time to say, hey, you should be using profiles to keep your work and your personal stuff. Because in the end, I mean, your personal emails, your personal bookmarks, your personal um, uh, contacts and stuff should be separate from your work stuff, right? Um, just because it just makes life a lot easier. Okay. Let's talk about autofill forms. So I've got a form here I'm going to pull up here. And notice here, I got first name, last name. This is per, for a sports center near where I live. Watch what happens when I back, put my cursor in here. It says, hey, I have this, this identity called Superman. Do you want to fill it out? Well, when I highlight this, it fills out Superman's name, his email address, and fills in the country. I don't have a last name for him, so it doesn't fill out. But you can do this within the settings of your of Chrome browser. 
So I'm going to go up to the three dots here. Please ignore these, uh, these, these, these things. These are just an extension I got added on that I have to always clear out every time. But I'm going to go into settings. And off to the left here, we're going to go into autofill. Oh, sorry. Before I do that, I go to settings. Do you see where it says sync and Google services? If you click on that and you go manage what you sync, here are all the things that are, are being synced to the cloud, to Google land, right? So by default, all the apps, my bookmarks, extensions. If I was to go and borrow someone's computer, I do not want my passwords being synced to that other person's computer. I don't want my payment methods being synced there um, and stuff. So you can, when you first go in and, and add that user, it's remember we said, do you want to, to uh, pick and choose what to sync? That's this section here. So if you're just going to quickly log into someone's uh, computer for a half an hour or something like that, I would always say, like, choose what to sync. Don't include your passwords if you don't want to, or, or and definitely do not include your payment uh, methods and stuff like that. Okay, let's go back to our uh, autofill. So within autofill, we have three different sections. We have passwords, payment methods, and addresses and more. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So these are different identities. So right now we've got Superman. And I'm just going to go and edit here so we can see the fields that are available. So we have Superman, his organization, a street address. I can complete all this stuff in here. Well, Superman also does work when in his disguise. So let's add another identity for that. So I'm going to go in and actually, you know what, just for the heck of it, let's, let's change him to the United States. Although I will say Superman was created by a Canadian, so it should be Canada. But I'm not going to argue about that. Uh, so, so we have Clark Kent here, Daily Planet, um, City, Metropolis, I don't know where, I think he's, I don't know where, where Metropolis is, but it'll be in Washington for now. And then we'll do Kent C at dailyplanet.com. All right. So let's go back here to this form. I'm going to refill it. And when I put my cursor in here, Clark Kent shows up. And you can see it's filling out all the stuff, Clark Kent, United States, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're, doing, when you're using these identities, you can do it for a number of different things. So let's say, for example, I want a different address. I do shopping online. I don't, I'm buying a gift for my wife. I don't want that gift to come here. Maybe I've got a buddy that's willing to take my deliveries. So I would just set up another identity called Trevor Beck Shopping or Trevor Beck Hidden. And then that way I would have a different address to put in there. So you can have all sorts of different things that you use. Because I do a lot of testing, or I, I've done it in the past, I did a lot of testing with forms and I wanted to have different submissions, I actually would create like five different uh, identities. So I could submit and have different names and different emails being submitted into the Google form without mine having to think there, oh, try and be clever every time I wanted to fill it out. I could just pick from the list and do that. So that's, that's the autofill part. Um, uh, and again, it also syncs with your, your mobile devices. Let's look at the next section passwords what so by default you can have chrome remember all your passwords as you go along and that's where it's the the, the checkbox there is if you're using another third party um tool like one password or something like that you would want to turn this off because you would only want it being saved to that third party tool you also have this automatically sign in um so you'll need to confirm if, if you turn it off for me, I just leave it on, whatever. If it's in the system, it's in the system. So with this all on, let's take a quick look at how this is going to run. I'm going to go back into here, and this time we're going to go to Dropbox. So I'm going in, I'm creating this Dropbox account. Uh, I'm signing up, so it's the first time. I'm going to click on first name, and oh, look at that. It recognizes Clark Kent's information, so I'm going to go ahead and put that information. His email's not filled in. This is actually uh, a security feature that Dropbox has put in that says do not fill it in, even if you have it, so that someone doesn't accidentally put in the wrong email address. But we will go to Kent C at uh, dailyplanet.com. And then the password. Well, Google Chrome says, hey, you know what? I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you a nice, secure password. No more password one, two, three, or any of those other things that are easy to remember. So it's going to do all that. Now, 
I'm not gonna actually create the account. The moment that I've gone and said to Google, yes, I want that password, it actually has already saved that information right there, okay? So the next time I come into to, uh, Dropbox, just gonna go back here, I'm gonna go sign in. Remember I had that checked off, it says uh, fill it in automatically, there it is, Claire Kent and then the password. So we can go in and, and, and it'll do that automatically. And that's again, pulling from Chrome. That's cool stuff. Here's a cool function as part of passwords and part of the work that, that uh, Google is doing. Google every now and then has access, or sorry, Google has access to um, the password or tools that take a look at passwords that have been uploaded to the dark web and are available somewhere else, wherever there's been a security breach to the website. And what it will do is when every once in a while, it'll take a look at your passwords, it'll go and compare it, and it'll come back with a report saying, hey, this password that you've had for Dropbox, it's available publicly. So people can get in, you need to change that password. So it will offer to prompt you that automatically. You can also manually go through and just hit check passwords. And it's gonna go through and do this uh, check. It says, hey, no, no, uh, no problems there with your passwords, that's easy enough to do. Um, just just for, for giggles, I haven't tried this before, but gonna, I, let's do this now. Um, I'm just gonna give in, just going into, Edit my password. So I'm going to put in password as my password. So let's see what happens when I do that check. Check again. Weak passwords. There we go. It's telling me there's a weak password. That's Dropbox. So that's great. It'll do it on its own, but you can, if you've got a bunch of passwords in there that you've just uploaded you or worked with, you can go in and change that. Payment methods, exactly the same thing as putting in addresses in. You would just go in and throw in your credit card information, whatever credit cards you want. And anytime you come to a field that asks for payment, you can choose your credit your credit card number by um, but whichever one you want. I'm not going to go into that. I mean, it's, it's just rinse and repeat. Uh, we talked about passwords. Look at that. We are just rocking now. Okay. Translating web pages. Any questions? Uh, nope. No questions yet. Cool. Let's look at, what am I saying? Oh, translating web pages. So I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of a couple of, I'll leave them open here. So I'm gonna go into the, a couple of web pages here. Just as a quick tip, if you've got a folder with a bunch of items in it, if you right click on it, you can open all the items in that folder off to the, in the same window you're in. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I've got, whoops. Don't need that. I've got a page here in in uh, Portuguese. I have a page here in French. In French, now there is a setting under in our settings here under languages where you can go in. You choose what languages you're able to read, and then Google will offer to translate pages that aren't in the language that you read. Now, let me show you what's supposed to happen. So here I have. I'm in my uh, my other training browser here. When I hit one of these pages. Google automatically says, hey, do you want me to translate? Right now it's in Portuguese. I click on English. It's now in English. As I click on, oh, let's look at the Burger King one. I always like this one, Burger King. If I click on that, I can go to that and it will keep translating as I go through, okay? And again, this isn't an exact science, right? I mean, it's close counts, it, you get the idea. So don't, if you speak French and, it's, and you're going, that's not exactly right, guess what? It's, it's close enough, we can figure it out. Now. This happens automatically. You see this icon and that basically allows Google to say, yeah, I'm gonna keep translating. For whatever reason, it didn't work on this browser. So how can I get around that? Well, this is actually quite easy. If I just right click anywhere off to the side, my dropdown says translate to English and it will do that. And I say English and go rock and, rock and roll. And there we are, residents of the center life. I'll click on that. Came back in, in Portuguese, I'll do it again, translate to English. There's my English translation. So ideally, this should be working. Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't work, but there's but it, that's actually kind of handy because like I said, I can now show you that if it's not working, you just have to hit translate to English and it will translate that. When it does it automatically, it's great because you start at the one page, you keep on going through the pages and it'll automatically translate as you surf the website. Great tool for when you're doing that research in, in other languages. 
Start up pages where you left off. So you remember when I told you about how I always end up with a whole whack of, uh, um, uh, hang on, whack of tabs and windows open? This is why. In my settings, under on startup, I will go through and it says continue where you left off. Well, I've been doing some bunch of research here and stuff. So when I close that window and then I open it up again, so I'm gonna go under my profile here and bring up Clark. There are the same tabs that are opened up. Okay, so that's sort of that there's a there's a nice and a danger of it, right? If for me it's dangerous because I end up with multiple windows and multiple tabs. So, um, but I mean, I always like to have that left off. You can just have it open a new tab, or just have it open a specific set of pages. So in the morning, I might look at um, CNN news and maybe CBC news and something else. So I might add those as specific pages, like a set of pages. I could add all three of them so that when I open up a new uh, start up, I'm going to see those three pages. I'll get my, my morning read in and then I can start doing my work and stuff. Okay. Let's say I gotta go. Let's go to this page here. Let's translate you. Thank you. So let's say for whatever reason I see this page, but I want to. I don't have time to look at it right now. There is a a, a, a recent added function called um, reading reading list, and basically it's just kind of like bookmarking something but with the ability to quickly read through it uh, and then delete it as you as you need you could do the same thing with bookmarks this is just a little bit easier so i'm just going to add the current tab here there it is there i can go through i click on this tab from whatever window i'm at i can click on that re bring that up in there and then i can go through if I want to keep the page around, I can use this checkbox. And what it does is it mark, puts it down to where it says pages you've read. If I'm actually done with it, I would just hit the X and then it would be gone forever. Again, the nice thing about this is it does sync with your mobile device. So you could say, okay, I'm going to go on a trip. Um, I'm, I'm driving I'm, or I'm on the bus from point A to point B. I have a half an hour. I'll bookmark three or four pages and then I'll put them in my reading list here. So they're not in my bookmarks, they're in my reading list. That's pretty much where that would come from. Excuse me. Um, and then last, well, not lastly, as far as commands, up in the top here, there's also the share button here. Now the share button is going to look a little different depending on whether you're on Windows or, or, what, or whatever. So uh, here's the article. It shows you here. If you're on Linux, it, it looks like this share. If you're on Windows, it looks like that, Chrome, Mac. And you can share different pages there. On the Mac here, I have the ability to go and just copy the link and create a QR code. Depending on what else I have going on and, and what um, browser I'm in, the creek uh, I can send to your devices. So if I'm logged in with my Android device or, or uh yeah, it doesn't work on the Windows, um, or sorry, it doesn't work on Mac, uh, iPhones, I don't think. I can send this to my other devices. So it allows me to communicate to my Android device without having to do copy, paste, uh, send an email or a message to myself. It'll just automatically open into my screen. So if you're in the Windows, uh, Android world, uh, take a look at that. Uh, are these remembered if you close the window? Uh, Shannon, are you talking? Oh, so you're talking about the reading list? Yes, the reading list are remembered. So uh, notice here, I'll just close this off right now. And then I'll bring that profile back. Clark Kent. And when I go into my reading list, there's the stuff. Because remember, I had a, an unread one there, a red one that I, that I had uh, marked for deletion. So that's the ones that I've got there. Okay, hopefully I'm not going too fast. We have approximately 20 minutes left. Oh, I've got lots to do. Searching open tabs, we already talked about that. The Omnibox, oh, this is my favorite. This is so cool. So if I want to search Google, I would just type in here, Kitty. And up it would show up and it searches Google. You can create a custom search up here though for other websites. So for example, I do some shopping on Amazon. Um, I have a shortcut, I'll just show you it in action. I just put AZ tab. I'm now gonna look for some headphones. What this is gonna do is exactly the same thing, except it's gonna go to Amazon, go into the search function, and it's gonna pull back my results without my having to go 
to the Amazon site, post it in there and do it that. So you can create all these different shortcut or sorry, uh, search engines up top here and you create your own shortcuts of what they're going to look like. So let me just show you where to find that first. Go into my settings here. Going to go into search engine. Yes, the default is going to be Google. But if you go to manage search engines, Google provides some in here. So this is the search engine. This is the shortcut that you would type in up here. But I've created some already. So there's Amazon. It's AZ. Uh, I'm going to search CBC. So let me just go up into here. I type in CBC tab. I'm going to look for uh, parade. And I don't even have to go to the CBC site. Google's done that for me. Okay. So there's, and, and so this saves you a lot of time. I can do this with Best Buy. I can do this with a bunch of different things. But let me show you how you would go and create that. Basically, you're going to go to a website and do a search. So I'm going to use McEwen University, where I used to work. And I'm going to go search up into here for Trevor. Take a look at the URL. So mcune.ca slash search q equals Trevor. So there's my query function here. So I want to grab that first. Remember, I searched for Trevor. I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to add a new search engine. What is the search engine? So this is the label. So that's the name that's going to appear when you're selected. So I'm going to call it McEwen. What's the shortcut? What are the keys that you're going to type in and then follow it with a space or a tab that, that then uh, kicks it off? In this case, I just do Mac. For McEwen. Now, here's the important part. I can't zoom in that you guys can see. I don't think, no, that doesn't work for you. URL with percent %s in place of query. So basically where I see Trevor, that's what I was searching on. I put in percent %s. Now, watch what, watch what happens. I go up top. My shortcut was MAC, MAC, tab. What do you want to search, Trevor? There's that label I talked about. Remember it said McEwen? Uh, what's we're going to look for Trevor again. And there it is. So I don't even have to go to the site. So what are some of the places that you search all the time? Because this is what you want to do. If you're constantly searching these places, you want to create these search engines. Well, guess what? I bet you a lot of you are searching Google Drive a lot. I know I do. So I'm going to go search into Google Drive. I'm going to look for Kitty. There's my three files that come up. Take a look at the URL. That is pretty easy to create. So I already have this created, so I'm just going to activate it. I'm also going to activate my Google Sheets and my Gmail. And so in here, we'll just take a quick review. I call it G Drive. My shortcut is Drive. There's the URL with that percent %s where the query is. OK, so let's do that again. I'm going to close this window up. I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to type in Drive and hit, and hit Tab. I'm searching Google Drive. What am I searching for? Kitty. There it is. Well, we can go beyond this, right? So let's say that I do a bunch of searches in Google. I do a lot of stuff in spreadsheets. So a lot of the materials that I'm looking for is spreadsheet related. Up in the top in our filters here um, for searching with Google, and if you don't use this, you should start using it. It is so powerful and strong. I can go and filter out everything and just say, you know what? I only want spreadsheets. The term there is kitty, item. Whatever you fill in here, when I hit search, it shows up here. Type spreadsheet, kitty. I do this all the time. I will open up, uh, open up Google Drive. And in here, I will do type, whoops, type document kitty. And it's just going to show me just that item. Take a look up top here, though. Query is equal to type is equal to document. Hey, that's cool. And then percent kitty. So this is going to be searching just documents. So I've done that using spreadsheets. If you take a look at the URL, drive.com, search query equals type of spreadsheet, and then the uh, percent s there. So that means that with all these windows closed, I'm going to type in, hang on a second. What was I typing in? Oh, sheets. That's my shortcut term. It's going to search Google Sheets for Kitty. And I just get that. So if you're like me, first of all, learn how to use this, this filter stuff here and learn how, learn how to just type it directly in. But once you've done that, set stuff up here in your, in your search engines for all those different types. 
Google Forms, uh, documents, PDFs, because at some point in time, you know the file you want is a PDF, or you know the file you want is a Google document or a sheet. No point in, in bringing up all the other uh, stuff. I have access to thousands of documents. The word kitty shows up a lot. Names of people, animals, reports, that kind of stuff. So um, I, I can narrow it down by saying, you know what, I, it's a spreadsheet file. I only want spreadsheets. So let's take a look at some of the other things you can do. Uh, you can create custom search engines for Google Forms. You can search just the title. Remember when we go over to here, if I go into here, here, let's do this. So I only want where, oops, sorry, title is Kitty. So I, had a, I did have a Google Doc there, but the word Kitty was in the document. But I know the file I want is something to deal with the word in the title. Um, again, Microsoft guys, OneDrive and SharePoint works excellent for that. I can search my bookmarks. I can search my Gmail. I can open up uh, and create a calendar. I can search Google Maps. Um, I can do a search by day or week. And there's different resources there to look at how to create all that. So, so once you've got those created, here's a cool thing about that. Let's say that I am doing some work here. Now, I want to do a quick search for... Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to use the McEwen uh, website. I'm going to search the McEwen website and see what we've got for headphones there. If I type in Control L or Command L, that highlights the Omni bar here. So I can start typing in uh, Mac and headphones. Now, if I hit Enter right now, what's going to happen is it's going to replace this window. I don't want that. I'm, I'm doing some research here, but I want to do a kind of some side search. If I hold the Shift key down and hit Enter, it opens up that search in a brand new window. So just by holding down the shift key, it opens up a brand new window. I can close that and come back to here. Well, maybe I don't want a new window. Maybe I want a new tab. So again, control L, uh, type in Mac. We're going to look for headphones. I'm going to hold down my uh, command key or control key on the windows. It opens it up here in the background as a tab. Read it when I want to come back to here. Or if I hold down that, that command key and shift, it'll open up in a new tab, but it'll also focus the view on that tab. So it's not in the background, it's forefront tab. I can look at that. Once I'm done doing my reading here, I can close that tab and I'm right back where I started from. So in here, control, command, control L, shift, uh, shift, return, command, shift, return. These are all handy uh, controls to work. And you know what else? You can also use those with links in a page. And we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. There's a video I did on power searching with Google Drive. So if you want to take a look at that, it goes into more detail on how to take advantage of those Google Drive searches. And then five custom searches you should enable in your browser right now. So those are, again, some other ones that you might want to look at. How are we doing? Everyone uh, having fun yet? Is there a link to the presentation? I joined late. Um, hang on a second. Let me, here, I'll just give you this URL and you can just grab it. There we go. Uh, where was I? Command, search, search, search. Oh, um, and you know what? Just, just as an, an FYI for people, if you're looking for something in a page, I've seen this, people will sit and scroll 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 trying to find something. There is still a, a search function for the page. Under the three dots, it com uh, F, Command F or Control F, and you can search for Bluetooth on the page and there it highlights it and then you can go down. So I've, I've, and it's great. I've seen students do this where you give them a page and say somewhere on this page is, is, you know, this phrase and they will sit there and scroll for five minutes trying to scan and find the page. So the search function there is, is, is handy. Another handy tool is the history. If I want, I can go up into my history of my, uh, of my browser, I can see all the history of all the tabs and windows I've looked at. But take your back arrow. If I click, and I mean, I can go back, 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 back to all those different pages that maybe I visited. But watch this. If you click and hold, it gives you the history there. So I'm just going to heck of it. I'm just going to go to here, bring that up. I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'm going to look at this one. And then come on, go to that page. And one more just to 
make it exciting. There we go. There's the history for the tab I'm viewing. So I don't have to go back, 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 back. I can just jump right back to that Amazon page or whatever page I want. All righty. We're having fun now. Uh, we talked about opening search tabs. We talked about recently closed tab. That's good. Um, opening links on a page. So let's let me let me do this. Let me go to uh, I'm going to just do cbc.ca. Hopefully there's something something good there. Um, so let's take a look. Chi does a return to India after 70 years of extinction. So this is a link. So I can right click and open link in new tab. But remember, I told you if you hold on the control key and 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 uh, did the enter there, it's the same thing with clicking on links. I'm going to hold my control key down. It opens in the background. This is great when I've got a page and let's say it takes a long time to load this page. I don't want to be going to here, load this, go back and load it. So what I do is I will go through and just hold the control key or uh, command key on the Mac. And I'll just click on these things and notice they're just open up in the background here in the tabs. So now I can go read this, close it. I still have this page open because I still want to read this. And there's all these different pages that I've just opened up in the background. I can go and say, oh, you know what? Uh, hang on, well, let's go back to the cheetah story. I want to read this now. So I'm going to hold the, con the, the control and shift key and click on it. And it brings it to a front tab. Just like I was showing you how to do with the links in the Omnibar. Same co controls to allow you to do that. I can also, uh, hang on a second here, see this link here? I'm interested in this. You can just click this and drag it up. See how there's a little arrow at the top there? It'll just punch it in there and drop it into the tab. I personally think it's just easier just to hold down the control key or, or command key and just open it in the background. To me, that just is an easier way of doing things. Um, tabs, all right. So I've got a bunch of tabs here. You can take, let's say I've got a bunch of tabs. I'm doing this research here. So that, uh, there's this cheetah here and I don't know, pure joy, 10 must see costumes, these, these things. I want to keep these together. So I can actually take this guy here and drag it down out of the tabs and it opens up as a new window. I'm going to take this and drag it back up and it puts it, the tabs back up there. I can also hold my shift key down and I notice how I've selected these three tabs here, right? Just like you would any piece of text, starting point, shift key, end point. There's my three tabs. I can now have those open a new window. I can also use my control key or my command key and select different tabs. So they don't even have to be lined up beside each other. Click and drag that down, put them all together in uh, one window. So, so, so even though I might have 70 tabs open up, I will start trying to bunch them together into different groupings and stuff. Because the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take these three tabs together and I'm going to go under my bookmarks and I'm going to bookmark all tabs. Basically, it's saying I'm going to create a folder of whatever window you've got up front here. So these three here, I'm going to create a folder with all those tabs in it. So I'll call it Cheetah Research. And I have it in my search engine, just, just makes it easier to find it. So when I go into my search engine, there's my cheetah research. So that's a really handy way. And, and as I showed you before, one of the nice things about it is anytime I want to open up that folder, I can right click on it and either open it up in this window here, open up in a brand new window, uh, or open up into a tab group. <clears throat> so a tab group, um, a tab group basically is kind of like, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go and make it uh, add to new group. It's kind of like a folder that collapses, opens and closes. So it's kind of like a folder. It, it, I have had kind of, um, uh, how, how to say this diplomatically, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I personally don't use it. If I'm going to do something like this, I would rather put it in a new window or create a folder so I can research it later. I found sometimes that when I close this, this window and I come back, my groups have disappeared. So I've done all this work and grouping stuff, and then they're, they're not there. So I would rather just create a folder with a bunch of subfolders and put everything in there. But for some people, if it works for you, hey, great. But my luck hasn't been the greatest. Um, when you've got a bunch of windows open and you want to close them, just click on the tab there, right click on it. You can 
close the other tabs. That means it'll close all other tabs except that one or close the tabs to the right. I use that a lot because I've been doing some research. There's all my links. I'm done. I'm just going to close them all to the right and keep these two there. Last thing, or sorry, not last thing. One of the other things is pinning something. So if I've got a bunch of stuff in here, I'm going to take these. Is that there yet? No, that's it there. So let's say I've got a bunch of these tabs open. I'm just going to do this again. Bunch of tabs. I'm always coming back to this cheetah article. I can pin this to the side. So it will pin it off to there. And then that way I can, I don't have to go searching in my tabs. I can find that window pinned over there. I don't use this a lot because I have the search function. I can always go searching for whatever it is I want, right? And there's a shortcut for that control shift A, a uh, or control or shift, shift control A or shift command A. Uh, I use, prefer to use that. But everyone has the, but those are lost if you close the window. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the groups. And yes, I agree with you, Shannon. Uh, bookmarking. I'm not going to, I mean, you guys know how to bookmark. I'm not going to give you any structure. But I do want to tell you about what to bookmark. Let's go back to Google Drive. Here's my Google Drive. I can bookmark that. Great. But I've seen people go like this. Then they go into here. And they'll just keep on going down 15 levels low. They always start at the top and they work their way down. Guess what? This is just a fancy web page, which means I can create a bookmark right here to this location, which will bring me to here. So I've done a bookmark in the folder here. I'm going to go into click on it. And you can see there it's shared with me, easy merge, pledge fundraisers, sponsorship invoices output. That's that you are, or that's that whole navigation bookmarked right there. So think about all these other things. Anything you do on a web page is bookmarkable. So if you're spending a lot of time going down 15 levels, create a bookmark for it. You've got classes that you're teaching and you've got assignments and there's folders and structures and that. Well, okay, book it right to that assignment. I mean, the nice thing is you can remove the bookmark, right? So for this month, we're going to talk about history and uh, I don't know, whatever, history, Aztec history. So, I'll, so we're always going to be in that folder. Just create the bookmark. When you're done with it, just delete it. Not a big, not a big deal. Okay, that's for the basic, basic stuff. Any questions on that before I move on to the, the, the advanced stuff? And I'm going to be kind of running a little faster here. Okay, no questions is, means go ahead, Trevor. So I'm just going to show you a couple of my favorite extensions. So extensions are things that you install from the Chrome store. So if you just go to chrome.google.com, you can go in and search for, whoops, hang on, where did it go? Let's try this again. Uh, Chrome web store. I'll search that instead. There we are. Chrome.google.com slash web store. That's what happened. So you can talk to your colleagues. You can, uh, I mean, I'm sure Eric has got an article somewhere on some great uh, extensions than that. Extensions adds to your Google Chrome, right? So there's these little features that you can add in that Google Chrome doesn't have. And I'm just going to show you a couple of the ones that I like to use a lot. My first one is Bitly. Bitly, if you're not familiar with it, basically is a shortcut generator. So if you take a look through, uh, through here, there's this long URL. Uh, in my articles, notice how everything's just got this Bitly kind of thing here. I go in and I create an account with Bitly. So Bitly is bit.ly. And uh, I would log in. I would create an account. And then I have this extension that I would add called Bitly. And what happens is when I'm on a page, it's, whoops, uh, on a page here, I click on this thing here. And it needs me to log in again. I'm not going to waste your time on that. But I would log in and it would provide me a shortcut. So I don't have to do that. Most of the documents that we use now, you're just going to highlight this and make this a live text. Sometimes these documents get printed off. That's when I would use a shortcut because nobody wants to try and, and, and type in that big long thing. But here it's kind of easy to go through in there. So this is what Bitly is really good for is that kind of stuff. Um, the next one I use is called Go Incognito. When you're doing testing to see, is this, is this page available to, to the public or to certain people? 
um, or usually it's the public. Right now, I've got this set up. I'm viewing this as a member of my domain. So obviously, they've got edit access to make changes. But what about you guys? How do I know that you guys can see it? Well, if you go into here, you create a, what's called an incognito window. And the incognito window basically says, hey, I'm not logged in with anything. So I'm not logged in with any account. So when you put a URL in there, it will go through and it will show you, um, can you access this? Because so notice it says here, sign in. That means I'm not logged in with Google. So you want to make sure that you can sign. If, if this shows up, that means anyone in the public can see it. Uh, quickly, because I know we have two minutes left, uh, a quick compose for Gmail. This is awesome. I just want to send an email. What's really I like about this uh, extension is that if I'm on a specific page, typically I want to send this to someone. When I click on this, it opens up an email, a compose page. And when I have it um, uh, set up properly, it will take the name of the, um, the, the title here as well as the URL, it will put it and fill it out automatically. So right now there's nothing in there. I'm just going to quickly go in here and my options. And I'm going to say, put the title in there, put the URL in there, save that setting. And now when I go and share something with someone, hang on, where to go? There it is. There it is. The subject line is set. There's that there. I can put it, I put it to whoever I want it to go to. And then whatever notes I want to attach to this, you should read this. So that's a great little extension. Do yourself a favor, just search handy extensions for teachers and stuff, and you'll find all sorts of stuff on that. Last thing, this is my favorite, programmable search engine. Basically what a programmable search engine does is it's your ability to go in to Google's, um, uh, Google's results and say, I wanna create my own search engine and I only wanna search these specific sites. So programmable search engine, uh, google.com, I created one called text search. In there, this is going to only search Apple, Google, and Microsoft sites, these sites right here. And you can create all sorts of ones. So if, if you've got students and you only want them to look at two or three different sites, you can create your own search engine. And I can go into here. This is only going to search those sites. So when I go share a file, it's only going to show me down here, Google, Microsoft, uh, Apple's in here. And if I want, there's filters I've set up that you can quickly go in there. Best part, take a look up here. There's a search query right up here, Q. So I can add that as one of my search engines, which I do. So now I type in tech, I can type in whatever I want file, and I'm gonna get my search engine searching just those files, not the whole, whole internet. That's it. Oh, three minutes left, two and a half. Um, so that, that's it. Yeah. I do have, like I said, um, where did I put the link? Uh, somewhere oh, at the bottom here, my resources resources. So there's a bunch of resources down here. Please come to my website. I've got all sorts of great tech. There's a, a must have spreadsheet skill. So if you do a lot of stuff with Google forms and stuff, you want to take the sessions and there are two sessions in there that I've done for today. Please take a look at those. It'll show you how you can take data that you've, you've collected in your Google um, forms and take it to the next level and the massaging that you can do um, and, and just magic. That's all it is. Okay, Joey, that's it. Two minutes left for you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much to Trevor Beck for sharing the session today. And thank you to everyone for attending the session. You can get a certificate of attendance for the session by going to the conference website, locating the session on the live session list page, and filling out the Google form that is linked for this session. Note, it may take up to a day for the certificate to get generated and sent to you. The recording of the session will be added to the same page later. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>